Our final of the four derby prep races this weekend, going for 50 points. The San Felipe were going out to Santa Anita. Um, they did cancel their racing for today due to some inclement weather. They were expected to be uh, to get almost half an inch of rain. Interesting to see how it plays out tomorrow for the track conditions. Um, name a more iconic duo. Santa Anita, small stakes field, and Bob Baffert having a third of the field. Uh, small field of 750 points. I really hope this, this changes soon. Um, Santa needed needs bigger fields and they need less Baffert's taking up a third of the field. Um, one thing I want to take note of here before we get started, when looking at bias, I'm a bias player, bias, 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 bias. Santa needed dirt routes, 60% wire to wire. On or within one length of the lead at the first call, 60%. This is a track where people just get out there and go. Uh, last 20 races, only two courses have closed more than off of four, and both of those races were low-level claiming races. So nothing of the uh, higher caliber mentality horses. This is an opportunity here where I think we're going to see a horse go to the front and keep going. I'll start us off here by taking a look at the number one horse, um, Happy Jack. I've burned a little bit of money on this horse so far. Eight to one morning line. I would need 20 to one to be interested. Horse needs to make a huge leap over, leap forward here. It is one of two for Doug O'Neill. Uh, beaten 27 lengths last time against a similar field. Um, this horse is just going to be a toss for me. Uh, again, I think this is similar to where Baffert enters two. Doug O'Neill entering one just to fill the fields. What do you think of the two? Yeah, number two, uh, worse Reed Sanchez. Uh, this is not a horse that I have any interest in. Uh, probably will be the longest price on the board and deservedly so. Uh, appears just to be better on the turf. Uh, hasn't really been a standout against Calbreds. Now moves up into a grade two uh, on probably the wrong surface. So uh, this is not a horse that I will have on any tickets. And I, I really have a hard time making a case for him just given his run style and everything else. I, I'm just not interested in this horse at all. Number three, uh, Armagnac. So this is a horse that I, I am interested in. So there's a lot of horses in here that are kind of trying this for the first time, you know, trying a dirt route for two turns for the first time. Uh, this is a horse that had broke his maiden at this distance and at this track. So that answers a big question that a lot of others in here still have yet to be asked. I like the fact that Velasquez keeps this mount. You know, he is pretty much the de facto number one rider for Bob Baffert in the last two months, they're 57% together with a you know, 46 cent to the positive ROI. So this is a horse that uh, maybe just needed that first start, maybe was never going to be a sprinter, did have a little bit of trouble at the break where he got bumped right out of the gate. Uh, maybe just wasn't quite prepped for that either because that second race, he seemed much more professional, uh, galloped out to an easy lead and just kind of ran away with that. I think that is somewhat flatter than the third place horse, South Street came back to win. It was a small field, and he did have everything his own way on the lead. He's unlikely to enjoy that same trip again. But I think Armagnac is uh, an interesting player in this field. Talk to me about number four, Beautiful Art. Beautiful Art. What can I say? Mike Smith picks up the mount here. Pratt jumps off for the five. Um, horse comes off LASIK, stretches from six to one and one sixteenth, as you said, trying something for the first time. Um, I don't think this horse fits the bias. I don't think this horse fits the level of competition here. Um, Mike Smith has not been money Mike as we used to know him. Uh, he has not been money Mike recently. Um, definitely in struggling. I don't know if he's getting older or he's just not getting the mounts that he used to get. He used to be, you know, Baffert's right hand man for a while, um, and he's just not getting those type of mounts anymore. Um, so this is beautiful art as a horse. I'm going to be tossing. Uh, I really do. Uh, I think it's really interesting. You know, Pratt gets off. I understand why, but I, I really think this horse is, is not going to be there. Um, Doppelganger number five lost to Forbidden Kingdom last time out. Stretches from seven furlongs. Tries two turns for the first time. As you said. We have a theme here, trying two turns for the first time. Uh, I think Baffert enters and tries to steal more derby points here. I don't think this is a legitimate contender um, for the derby. Uh, it's not eligible, but I'm saying in terms of horses, I don't think this horse will get the distance. Um, coming against the coming off the pace against this bias, I think there's an opportunity for other horses in this field to get out front and keep going. So I'm interested to see uh, how it plays and what happens with this Baffert training. What did you think of the six and the seven? Yeah, we round out the field with the uh, first off number six, Forbidden Kingdom. This horse is going to be your favorite and is a deserving favorite. This horse is fast. I mean, out of the gate, this horse is you know, breaking sub 22. I mean, pretty, pretty easily, truthfully. Uh, the big question with Forbidden Kingdom is just how far can you go? If you look at the pedigree, American Pharaoh, I mean, that's a pretty good stamina influence. 
at the bottom of that pedigree, you know, just Louise Dam, uh, five star day, Dam Sire, and all the siblings were nothing but sprinters. So there is no stamina whatsoever on the bottom of that pedigree. So mixed signals as far as really how far he wants to go. Uh, Richard Mandela hasn't really pushed him any farther than seven furlongs. He appeared to get it pretty easily last out when uh, beating Pinehurst and actually beating uh, Doppelganger as well in that uh, San Vicente. So uh, definitely the horse to catch, probably the horse to beat, but at a very short price and with some question marks, I, I have some reservations as far as if I'm really what, uh, ready to go and uh, bet this horse with both hands. Number seven is Cabo Spirit. So this horse really surprised me last time out. I didn't give him a chance in the uh, RB Lewis, you know, and when you see that he got beat by 15 lengths, maybe he really never had a chance, but that was an odd race. Messier won that race by 15 lengths with just an unbelievable speed figure, but Cabo Spirit was seven lengths clear of the horse who ran third, Wharton. Now, if you look at Wharton, that horse actually beat uh, the number three horse, Armagnac, in their debut race. So it's not like he beat an absolute bum. That's a Bob Baffert horse that he beat by seven lengths. I don't know what to make of the speed figures from that race. It's a tough race to pin a figure to. But I think it answered the question for me that he, he handles dirt and he can probably get this distance. Uh, he doesn't need the lead, but he should be forwardly placed. And it's a horse that if you really – aren't sure about taking a short price on some of the horses that are trying two turns for the first time or trying dirt for the first time or anything else. I think Cabo Spirit could be an interesting uh, longer priced alternative. So that brings us to our top picks here. I'm going to be a chalk eater. Um, I'm going to go with Forbidden Kingdom. Uh, I've seen the Mandela and JJ interviews. They've talked about they've been working in the morning. Um, JJ has done all of the workouts in the morning um, since the last race. Um, horse just steps forward each time. Uh, I know you're a little concerned about the pedigree. I did see that top side American Pharaoh. Uh, the bottom side doesn't necessarily scream distance, uh, but I think this horse has shown that it, 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 if it can get to the front and settle, it can keep going. Um, JJ, if you if JJ follows the notes from the last race, uh, sped clear and stayed clear. Um, I think this is an opportunity where you could see a horse go off, get ahead by three, four, five lengths, uh, get to the, the half call, settle him down, run that second fraction in 24, 25 seconds after running a 22 opening, settle him down, come to the top of stretch, open him up again, and, and wrap him up by the 16th pole. Um, this is a horse that I'm going to be looking for possibly as a derby horse. The one question, as you said, is can it get the distance? My answer is I think it can. Uh, who is your top pick? Yeah, so I definitely think Forbidden Kingdom is very formidable in this spot. And I struggled with this race because I just don't feel strongly about any horse. This is not a race I'm probably going to bet, but I, I will watch it, of course. If I had to choose, I'd probably go with the number three, Armagnac, just because he is proven at this distance and at the Santa Anita. You get Johnny Velasquez and Bob Baffert, and I think on the morning line, you're getting something like five to one. And you know, given the other Baffert and Forbidden Kingdom, there is a chance that you get a decent price on this horse. These Baffert horses are almost never one-dimensional speedballs. They typically have some throttle to them. So I don't really anticipate Armagnac going out there and going 21-45 with Forbidden Kingdom on the lead. Uh, that's not a recipe for success for either of those two horses. Uh, I guess my concern would be that it is the same ownership group as the whole, uh, number five doppelganger. So uh, it does concern me that perhaps he may be in here to ensure an honest pace for the stable mate. But I tend to think that uh, this horse will take a more measured approach. And if he can sit just off Forbidden Kingdom, I think he has a decent chance to overtake him late and then hold off some of the late runners. Did you find any prices that you liked in here or were you all about Forbidden Kingdom? I'm all about Forbidden Kingdom. I have a, uh, a little bit of a bet on this horse for the futures odds. Um, I got a nice one after the last pool. Um, I'm not going to. I'm a speed junkie. I love speed. I love the speed horses. Um, cheap, uh, inexpensive velocity, as, as our friends would say. Um, I love cheap speed. I think this is, this is a horse that's not necessarily cheap speed. It's going to carry all the way through. Seven horse field, it's tough for me to find a long shot that I like. Um, so I'm just going to stick with the uh, Forbidden Kingdom. Did you have anybody that you liked as a price? So as I said earlier, there, I didn't really like anyone at all. <laughs> but, it, you know, if I was going to make an argument for a price horse, it would be the seven Cabo Spirit, uh, just because I thought that he, he ran a pretty decent race last out. 
And if Messier is not in that race, then he wins that race by seven lengths, you know, given the, where the other uh, couple of horses finished. Now, albeit that was a, you know, only four horse field or five horse field. So not the most uh, accurate measuring stick for ability perhaps. But uh, this is a horse that I think will get kind of overlooked just based off of uh, the 15 lengths he was beaten and most of his success coming over turf. But that's probably the one uh, outsider horse that I think uh, could go up and make a decent run at a good price. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. This was a tough race to handicap, a tough card to work. Um, and knowing Santa Anita, one of these horses is going to scratch and we're going to come down to a field of six because um, that's what happens every time. One point of note, as I mentioned earlier, they are expecting a half inch rain in, in Santa in Acadia, California today. Um, they did come cancel today and move their their card to Monday. Uh, we also have that Golden Gate Field force out on Monday. So we actually have some quite decent handicapping and racing coming this coming Monday, but they did cancel due to the rain. So I'm interested to see what the track looks like tomorrow um, for that first bet day as we see those cross countries again, pick fives on the dirt and turf from Santa Anita and Gulfstream Park. And that's your field of seven for the one and one sixteenth of a mile, 50 point race, San Felipe, this coming Saturday, race number six, 530 p.m. at Santa Anita.